to Ian Neal for a substantial, extensive, and innovative lens designs which have had a lasting impact in motion picture cinematography, the Academy presents him with a Gordon E. Sawyer Award. Ian, come on up and get your Oscar. I have three ways to do this, three ways to speak. Uh, there's something up there I can just about see with my implants in my eyes. And then uh, I can try to remember a few words and I can also try to read a few words, so I'll probably mix them all up together. Um, I gotta say, you know, obviously, wow, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. So it's, uh, you know, it's really something, um, you know, it's a great honor you know, to receive this award. And uh, firstly, I'd, I'd like to thank the Academy, um, the Board of Governors, SciTech committees, you know, for this award. Um, since I come from a baker's family in Glasgow, Scotland, you probably saw the, the kilt earlier <laughs> a few times, <laughs> but I've, I've, re I've reduced to just the waistcoat <laughs> tonight. Um, so, so because I'm coming from a baker's family, I, will, um, I, I won't give this award a number. I think you probably guessed the number. It was actually, I didn't realize we were gonna mention numbers, but so we just call it a baker's dozen. <laughs> you probably heard the saying. Because <clears throat> so, um, I don't wanna have an unlucky number, you know. <laughs> Secondly, I think if I were to start naming people I've known over many years, that might take a while. And of course, I wouldn't want to miss anyone out. So I'll limit the naming to my family, starting with my parents who cannot be here, but drove my career quite a bit. Uh, and of course, they were fundamental to me standing here tonight. Uh, and my lovely wife, Stella, and my son, Andrew, they're here, over here, in the audience. <clears throat> um, well, I would say they've sure, surely reached a point of lens saturation. Maybe that's what I call it. Almost as great as my own. Um, yet they still put up with my never-ending appetite for cine lens design. In other words, I'm still doing it even now. Um, <clears throat> now, I have to say that, you know, over the decades, I worked with so many people who have all been involved in various areas of cine lens design and development. You know, and I have to say, I've, you know, I've enjoyed working with them and there's been a lot of ups and downs. Some of these uh, zoom lenses were, I would say a little bit nerve wracking, uh, not just technically, but for the people funding them. <laughs> uh, in fact, there was one lens, I, I won't mention the name, but there was one, well, I'll say it's a zoom lens and it was one of the earlier ones. It was eight years to develop the lens, to actually develop it and have a product. And there were a lot of, you know, digits in front of the, the million dollars. It was a very expensive project. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, <laughs> now I've stood up here before, um, of course, and um, I've always wondered, you know, what else to say. Um, so I thought maybe um, I'd mention a little anecdote way back to when I first got into the movie business. I think they mentioned I work in other areas. So I, I actually came from, um, I'll, I'll use the word surveillance business, just to be careful uh, with the wording. Um, surveillance. Still do actually work in that area. And um, so, so coming to Hollywood, well, I had an interview. It's the only company I'll mention, actually. I, I had an interview at Panavision who were developing their latest Pre, uh, prime cine lenses, I, th I think they were shown here, primo, primo cine lenses. <clears throat> and, uh, but the company, Panavision, they had, a, they had eyes on developing companion high-end, I mean really high-end zoom lenses. In fact, they actually had to match the, the prime lenses, which going back, we're going back about 35 years now to try to have a zoom lens. We're talking about technically now, technically match a prime lens is, is, 
especially a very good prime lens, is quite difficult, or was quite difficult. So, of course, I was asked during my uh, interview, you, you know, could I develop these zoom lenses? And, um, you know, I'd done, I'd done a lot of previous work before, actually in the surveillance area, surveillance field, but it was all infrared zoom lenses, you know, like for thermal imaging, you, you know, the nighttime and heat, looking at heat. <clears throat> so, of course, I was, um, you know, was aware about zoom lenses, but the question was, you know, you know could I design the lenses that Panavision wanted. And, um, you know, I sort of thought about it a little bit and thought, well, probably not really, but, you know, I've, I, you know I, want, I want to get the job, you know, at Panavision. So, so I, I just said, you know, you know, to heck with it. The answer's got to be yes, you know, so I said yes. The funny thing is, though, after I started working on the Zoom Lens project and, and many others afterwards, I realized that this is all cutting edge, state of the art. Uh, lens work, you know, lens design work, and um, and it's all innovative. So actually, no one's ever designed them before anyway. So then I thought, well, you know, the answer was true. You know, yeah, I mean, I may as well have said yes because what difference is it going to make? <laughs> and and I got the job. And after, like I mentioned earlier, like eight years and a lot of money, the company did end up with its first really high end. Uh, zoom lens, and then I think at the end there they mentioned the Primo Macro Zoom. Actually, I think it was Curtis Clark mentioned that. Oh, oh it was the shot with the um, Minority Report with the shot down on the lady's eye. You know, the drawback shot that was a whole. At the time, well, I guess even today, it's, it was quite complicated with zooming and focusing and a crane and you know, and computer and. Oof. <clears throat> so, 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 so anyway, um, anyway, that's how I got the job at Panavision. And um, no one did really know that I couldn't design the zoom lens when I got the job, <laughs> but I got the job. So one other thing I, I thought I'd mention was just, um, you, you know, today a lot of people ask, in fact, I was just asked outside the theatre, actually, the, these, uh, I guess, press people, you know, and, the, and this keeps coming up now, and, and I hear about all this digital stuff and computers and farms and whatever it is. Um, so, so I'm often asked, well, what's the difference between cine lenses of 40 years ago and cine lenses now? I mean, it's just cine lenses, right? I, I said, well, the difference is back then everything was shot in film, at, at least, you know, mostly, you know, predominantly shot in film. Nowadays, it's a lot of it, most of it's digital imaging. And that's actually changed the look of the image. So, so you've got the new technology, you, you know, you know digital, digital cameras, electronic sensors as opposed to film. <clears throat> the trouble with, if you just take an old film lens and stick it on a digital camera, uh, well, there's a problem with, with digital imaging, and that is the picture doesn't look very good. It certainly doesn't look like film. Um, so, 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 you know, I, I hear the words like, well, if you shoot with a digital camera, the image looks, you know, sort of sterile, clinical, and it's not, uh, it's not aesthetically pleasing. So we're, so, so we're faced with a situation here where it's a sort of a dilemma where the new lenses, the modern lenses, have to somehow make the digital image look like the film image. Because, of course, the point of all this is not really technical. At the end of the day, it, it becomes, you know, it's an artistic thing. You're trying to create a, a look, a certain look to the image. <coughs> so, you know, so you know, there's several, there's a few ways to do this. I'll just, I'll just glance on this because of the time restriction. Um, I just mentioned, you can use old vintage lenses, and I mean old vintage lenses, um, and put them on the digital camera, because these old lenses are not, they don't perform very well, but that actually helps. It sort of mushes up the image a little bit <laughs> and makes it look more like film. You can take existing lenses and sort of, you know, get a hammer and a chisel and sort of bang them around and take a lens element out and forget to put it back in, that, that, that kind of thing. Um, that's called detuning, by the way. That's the technical term, detuning. Nobody talks about the hammer. Um, <laughs> and sometimes the hammer can destroy the lens, but you know, what the heck, you get the image, you know? <clears throat> uh, the last option is you actually design brand new lenses. And of course, I like doing that. That's my favorite approach because that, get, that, that gives me a lot of work. And I still work, keeps me busy. And of course, uh, you know, my family, they're fine putting up with it because they've been doing it for 40 years, you know, so, so it gives me lots of work to do. 
another thing, just jumping on another thing about cine lenses that I found the best way to design them is actually to go to the film sets or you know location or whatever to actually be there with the production um, because you really need to talk to the artists and, and I, I don't just mean the cinematographer you know you've you've got various people I mean, it can even can be directors producers actors who visual special effects um, but you because you, you really need to know what they want so, so you have to understand what they want from the lens uh, it's not a matter of designing a lens and saying there you go guys you know shoot Terminator 23, you know, it, does, it doesn't work that way. So, and it's not just computers and numbers. So, so, so you've got to have a strong connection with the artist. At least that's the way I think of it. And um, actually it makes the lens design, I, you know, maybe I'm pushing this a little bit, but I, I see it's a bit of an art and a science. It's sort of a combination because if you only make it a science, it's, uh, it's a, a nice technical device, but you know, does it really work for the person using it? Um, certainly nice in the computer when I look at the screen and I look at all the numbers, but is it good to use? <clears throat> so, so the point is that even with the migration from film to digital, um, you know, the desired look, the look, you know, the look, of course, it varies, you know, depending on the storyline, etc. The desired look is always, is, is always been, uh, it's always been the same, really, and lenses are a great uh, tool for getting a favoured look. Just before ending, I would like to say something I've been quoted on many times. Um, it's just a little sort of side fact, but um, it's interesting to note that camera technology, including film um, and uh, digital imaging capture, hasn't, you know, it will change over the years. You know, it obviously changes. Um, <clears throat> but, but the, you know, all that, all of that imaging system still depends on or relies on one image forming uh, device, the lens. And um, actually the lens predated film. Um, I'm not gonna go back to Leonardo da Vinci or who came up with it, but it went back a long way. And I guess it will probably outlast current silicon electronics, which is what's driving sensors for digital cameras. So the lens has been here sort of before film, after, before what we know now is digital cinema and probably it'll, it'll be here later with some new kind of digital cinema or something different. So to finish, I'd like to say, um, I think it's marvelous that the Academy has always, prom has always promoted the scientific technical community as, you know, as a whole, um, with lens designers being, you know, over the years they've been recognized uh, for cine lens work by their peers. Um, I think this is highly motivating for up and coming lens designers, definitely promotes what I call the art and science of lens design. Um, again, I thank the Academy for this most special golden award. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.